Last week, we told you about an Arizona bill that is focused on medicinal mushrooms. Now, if passed by 2026, the state would allow clinical trials on psychedelic mushrooms. The State Department of Health Services would license the clinics and only federally licensed mushrooms could be used to treat seven specific disorders, including PTSD and chronic pain. That bill is now moving through the legislature and still needs to advance to the full Senate. So how do these psychedelic mushrooms work? Let's ask the expert. Joining me once again, Dr. Natasha Bouillon. Natasha, now this medicinal mushroom, yeah. it's also known as psilocybin. Mm -hmm. Explain how this works. Yeah, so psilocybin is a psychedelic and it's very similar to something like LSD. It's produced in about 200 different species of fungi. And what happens is that our gut processes that psilocybin and binds it to a receptor called 5H2A. Mm -hmm. And basically when that happens, it kind of causes a domino effect in our brain. And by that, I mean our brain starts to synchronize a lot of different synapses, mm -hmm. almost when you think about a harmony, a symphony all playing together. Right. And what happens then is it produces a hallucinogenic effect. Right. But the other benefits of what happens is that people might have new insights into old problems, mm -hmm. or they might alter their senses in different ways. And what scientists are really trying to do is they're trying to figure out can we harness the power of these magic mushrooms to actually help people without having the high and a lot of the research is in the early stages right now okay that is so fascinating okay. but break down you know some of the medical conditions that this could actually help with yeah so there's a very few clinical trials that are with uh, magic mushrooms right now but what we're finding in the early trials is that they can help various mental health conditions so for example depression we've looked at people who who are resistant to typical treatments for depression. So medications might not work, counseling might not work. In these groups, they've been given psilocybin mm -hmm. and we look at them months and months later and we find out they have a different perspective on life and they're feeling better when other treatments didn't work. Anxiety is another condition. Mm -hmm. People who are anxious, specifically those who have a cancer diagnosis, they've been given psilocybin in a controlled setting mm -hmm. and months later, they have improved quality of life. Addiction is another one we're looking at. Smoking cessation is a really interesting one. So folks that have been given psilocybin for smoking cessation, six months later, even after six months, 80% of people have quit smoking. Wow. That actually does better than some of the medications on the market for quitting smoking. Now, I think the key though is with psilocybin, it's often administered in a controlled environment. Yeah. So this is not just people going at home and getting high at home. No. It's really in a medical facility under medical supervision. Oftentimes there's therapists on site, so it's okay. very controlled. Yes. That's one way to administer it. The other way is microdosing, taking mm. very, very, very tiny doses of psilocybin daily. Okay. Now, again, it's still a scheduled one substance, right. and so it's illegal federally, yes. and that's because there's limited research on the medicinal benefits, but we are learning more every single day. Yeah. Hence the bill and the fact that it still needs to be passed. Mm -hmm. And again, those are, this bill is really focused on these clinics. Yes, it's, yes, yeah. So the bill, you know, if the bill is passed, it's focused on treatment facilities. Right. They would have to get licensed. Everybody would have to get training yeah. and the right people would need to qualify it yeah. couldn't just be anyone oftentimes it's people who have a history of trauma first responders firefighters and so we're focusing on a really narrow population of people before we just spread it to everybody because we're really learning more it's it's quite experimental at this point real quick go over the risk factors yeah well you know we have to know that it's a drug yeah. and there are drugs out there that are prescription drugs and there are drugs out there that are non-prescription drugs every drug comes with risks and side effects. And so with psilocybin, we know that it can interact with other medications. Like other psychedelics, it can increase your heart rate, it can increase your breathing, it can increase your blood pressure. And so we think that people who have underlying cardiac or heart conditions might have a higher risk in them. That being said, the safety profile overall, it's pretty tolerable, especially considering it's still illegal. Yeah, should be interesting to see if it gets passed. Yeah. All right, Natasha, great breakdown. Great, thank, thank you so you. much.